Hi, I'm back. Just having a cup of coffee after lunch. I, I, uh, I just went to Trader Joe's and stocked up on my favorite citrus of all time, pomelos. Check out these babies. I, I'm just in the car, just, I'll just, I'm just shooting you here, showing you what's in this thing. Um, the, the, the pomelos are just amazing. They are my favorite grapefruit citrus of all times. And here's what I have for lunch. A lot of you have asked, hey, Paul, you're a vegetarian. What kind of crap do you eat for lunch? I mean, you know. So <laughs> that I had today what they call a tofu spring roll. Now, I know tofu is tasteless nothing, right? Good protein, but tasteless nothing made out of soybeans. The peanut sauce that you can buy with this is great. It just gives you a little bit of uh, pizzazz to that nasty old tofu. Oh, and there's one other thing. I've been looking at these videos for quite a while. We've been making them for a while daily. And I decided, you know, I don't need a fancy opening. Let's just get to the chase. Let's just, let's just go right to it and get to our questions. I'm going to just skip the opening from now on. We've been through like five different uh, uh, types of music and enough. I'll keep, I'll keep the ending. How's that? All right. Arthur in Sydney, Australia. Having had an HCA, which was um, our um, hybrid class A amplifier named after the very famous Infinity, Class, a hybrid class A amplifier, which is basically the Infinity one was vacuum tubes and MOSFETs. Or no, I'm sure I'm sorry. They used bipolars, vacuum tubes and bipolars on the uh, on the output. And in ours, we used a class A input stage and a class D output stage. Anyway, um, he had one in the past and. He said it was a big mistake to sell. He said, I'd like to hear your opinion about the future of Class D amplification. Will Class D ever be able to equal or even better Class A or AB? I'd appreciate your educated opinion on this matter. I enjoy your little video presentations. Keep it up. Well, thank you, and I really appreciate you being so generous with your words, Arthur, and uh, watching the videos. I, I, I appreciate it. L Class D is a controversial type of amplifier. Class D is pulse width modulation. Now, a lot of people don't really understand what that is, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you just a, a quick few words on what Class D is. I, I, in one of these comments on the video section, I got into it with some fellow who was really upset he was using F-bombs and like, you don't know what Class D is, and I, you know. Let's not get so agitated. <laughs> this is the stereo we're messing with, all right? A, a Class D amplifier runs on what's called pulse width modulation, PWM. And essentially, there is a clock, which usually runs about 100 kilohertz. It can run at any frequency, but for, for, for most stuff, it runs at about 100,000 uh, cycles a second, right? And so for every clock cycle, we have a pulse. And that pulse, which is a square wave, okay? That square wave of energy going from zero to on varies in width. So if, if we're trying to build up a big wave like that in a sine wave, they go in steps, like you would think a DAC might do. And if we're trying to continually generate higher levels in the sine wave, then the pulse stays on longer, putting more energy out. And if we want a very quiet passage, there's either no pulse or a very short pulse. So the width of the pulse varies, hence with pulse width modulation. And th it makes for various steps that are creating our sine wave that eventually power the loudspeakers. Now the only trick with pulse width modulation is that at the end of the day, you gotta get rid of those steps where each of those pulses uh, comes on 100,000 times a second. To do that, we need a fairly aggressive output filter. And the problem with 
and it's just a low pass filter and really low pass filters are pretty simple I mean the simplest low pass filter you can imagine is a resistor with a capacitor to ground that's going to roll off any of the high frequencies got it so it's pretty simple problem is this is a power amp so you don't want to add a series resistor into the mix because well you know we want the lowest output impedance we can in order to drive our speakers which are four ohms or two ohms whatever their impedance is so the lower the output impedance of the amplifier the better it's going to sound how do we do that well we can do that in a number of ways but the the filters inside of a class D are typically done with coils of wire uh, and these will act like resistors at high frequencies but wire at low frequencies they're called inductors so a combination of uh, inductors and capacitors form this output filter okay so that's what a class D amplifier is and one of the advantages of class D amplifiers is they are as linear as they could be just uh, the linearity curve is almost perfect where in a class AB amplifier our linearity curve kind of goes like this has a, a, a place in the if, if this is from the lowest to the highest within that range we've got a very narrow range of perfect linearity and then at the outside the, as it gets louder and as it gets softer in, in terms of level that linearity goes away and we have to use things like feedback to straighten out that linearity. So class D amplifiers, far more linear than class AB amplifiers. So they do have their advantages and a lot more efficient because you're only going from zero to on in various widths or lengths of time with a class D amplifier as opposed to moving continuously between the power supply rails of an AB amplifier, then we wind up having efficiency issues with the AB amplifier, which is why they make heat, and Class D doesn't. Lots of advantages to them, and I won't bore you with, with all of that, because I, I like to keep these not too technical and kind of short, but the bottom line is that every amplifier has its good parts and its bad parts. Everything we do has baggage, right? And so a class D amplifier's baggage is it's not great on the high frequencies and can tend to struggle with higher frequencies and with uh, complex musical passages. And so you have to be very careful when you build a class D amplifier of, of how you create the synergy between the input and the output stage, the power supply, and any number of factors, and yes, Class D amplifiers, as we've shown in our Stellar series, can sound terrific. I mean, a Stellar amplifier, like an M700 uh, monoblock amplifier that we make, that's one of the best sounding amplifiers there is, period. Whether it's Class A, Class AB. Now, it's not as good as a BHK. It's not as good as a D'Agostino. It's not as good as a number of products out there that are Class A or Class AB. But having said that, I put it up into the top 90 percentile of all amplifiers ever made. So yes, it can. I don't think it'll ever best our best efforts of class AB, class A, and tubes. Hope that answers your question. Thanks a lot for asking it. Talk to you later. Bye.